Hi, this is Pete Chadwick, a member of the product working group for the OpenStack organization community. Um, today I'm here with Amrit Kumar from Tesora, uh, who is the PTL for the Trove project. Uh, Amrit, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and give us a little background on what you've been doing with OpenStack? Sure. Thank you very much, Pete. Uh, my name is Amrit. I'm the PTL for the Trove project in the Newton cycle. Um, I'm also the Chief Technology Officer for Tesora, and we are the Trove company. Uh, we're a company which focuses primarily on Trove development and a Trove-based product. And we have a team that is uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Mississauga, which is uh, near Toronto and Canada. Great. Tell me a little bit more about what Trove is and, and explain to people exactly what the uh you know, what the project does and what's, what its overall goals are. Sure. So, so Trove is the OpenStack database as a service project. It was uh, incubated uh, before, uh, before the IceHouse release. It was integrated in IceHouse. And it basically gives users the ability to easily consume databases in, in an OpenStack cloud. So, if you think about it, uh, gone are the days when you had, you know, one size fits all or a corporate database standard, if you will. App developers, architects, uh, they ch tend to use the best database for the job. And that means that most enterprises now have applications that use a variety of databases, some relational, some non-relational, no SQL database, and so on. Trove is a service that provides a common set of APIs with which to provision and manage the life cycle of a variety of different database technologies. Uh, with this, a cloud service provider, for example, or an IT organization can offer an easy to consume self-service database portal. And users can go to that portal and provision the database of their choice, and Trove will provision uh, the database for them. It provides a simple mechanism to also automate the majority of the life cycle maintenance operations for a database. And a database user can now orchestrate complicated database technologies like replication and clustering and so on and so forth, effectively to ensure data security, data integrity, and easy configuration management. So at a very high level, enterprises can improve their stability, security of databases while reducing total cost of ownership and risk. That's basically what Trove does for you. Okay. So we just finished up the uh, the Austin planning sessions of the design summit. Uh, well, I guess it's now almost three weeks ago. What were the hot topics that um, the Trove team discussed, and kind of what decisions did you did you try to drive in the in the discussions? Okay, so we had a, we had a lot of very interesting conversations at the summit. Uh, I'll give you a quick summary of some of these conversations. Um, there was a lot of conversations about how we should handle upgrades in Trove. Uh, we had several different approaches which we investigated. We discussed the spec which has been put up for review. Uh, we had we had a uh, fairly interesting conversation or set of conversations around containers and uh, how people can orchestrate databases within containers. This discussion started before the summit, summit with a spec which had been proposed. Uh, we continued at the summit. At, uh, at the summit, we had several points of views expressed. One point of view was that Trove should support uh, alternate compute backend. So at this point, Trove supports Nova as a single compute backend. Um, there was a point of view which said Trove should support alternate compute backends and potentially interface directly with Magna. Um, the other point of view was that Trove should continue to focus on a single compute backend, uh, Nova, and not really deal with Magnum. And we should use Nova drivers as a way to orchestrate uh, bare metal virtual machines or containers. Um, and we had, we had lots of discussion about this. We also uh, had some input from experts on, on Magnum and containers, and we decided to go with the Nova-based approach. Um, we, we also discussed a couple of projects that would significantly extend Trove's capabilities in the area of storage. Um, currently, Stro uh, Trove relies on Cinder as the only storage backend, 
And there's a project underway to extend this, potentially to have Manila as another backend. Uh, there's a project which will try and better use capabilities of storage like Cinder to do things like snapshots for backups and so on. Um, these projects are going on, uh, going ahead right now. But uh, these were some of the really interesting discussions which we had uh, at Summit. In these discussions, you know, did you talk about specific user needs? Was there a lot of feedback from the from the broader user community? Yeah, we, we were. We we did talk about specific user needs. We had we had some members of the user community who participated at the discussions, and some of these are are specs which have been up for review. So we've had users uh, provide comments and um, reviews on the specs as well. So one of the things which um, and I have to say I'm lucky to be able to build on some of the work done by the previous BTLs is we have a fair amount of feedback from end users of Trove. And I'm, I'm lucky to have that feedback continue. So uh, if there are other people who watch these videos and are interested in databases, yeah, please do feel free to come and comment on our specs. We, we value your input. Great. That's uh, that's exactly what we need to do across all the projects. Yeah. So, what what do you see as the as sort of the the top three priorities or new user features that you're going to roll out as part of the the Newton release? Sure. So, um, there are. A, so let me let me maybe answer that question uh, by talking about uh, a very significant problem which users brought up which we, we need to address. We talked about upgrades as one of the projects which we want to work on. Um, architecturally, Trove has a, a guest instance, typically a Nova instance. It may be bare metal, it may be a VM, what have you, which runs the database which the user wanted, but it also runs guest agent. And running the guest agent in tenant context has always been a, a challenge. So there's a very interesting project called Superconductor which proposes to address this by having a new controller side component which will manage the guest instances remotely. So to answer your question, what are the three priorities which we have? We want to, as a project, uh, continue to rapidly improve the capabilities that Trove provides. But at the same time, um, while we add these new capabilities uh, to control clusters and things like that, we're looking to make sure that we're going to also maintain interoperability with old clouds, uh, with existing users with Trove, and to make sure that data is not lost while we go through this. So key projects we're looking at, additional capabilities for clustering, um, additional capabilities for high availability through anti-affinity and affinity for placement of instances, uh, clustering for Couchbase, backup and restore for Postgres, uh, improving our CI testing with scenario tests, uh, all of these are projects, you know, specific projects which we're working on, uh, which will try and get to that point where we improve the capabilities of Trove, make it more enterprise ready, and uh, better able to serve the uh, the needs of people who are using Trove. Okay. Would you say there are any particular themes that you were trying to to, to focus the development yeah. activities on for for Newton? Um, we've been trying to do this now for um, a couple of cycles. The Mitaka release, we, we consciously started to do it in Mitaka. Um, Trove as a project grew very quickly. We accumulated a fair amount of technical debt. Um, but while we're doing that, we've now come up to a point where we support almost a dozen databases and you know clustering and replication and things like that. So in the Mitaka release, and now again in the Newton release, we're gonna focus on things like interoperability, stability, ease of use, um, and those three things are, you know, if you will put, if you put each of the projects which we're looking to do, it'll fall into one of those releases: interoperability, stability, or ease of use. Okay. And when you say ease of use, is that end user focused or also operator focused in terms of ease of manageability? So, so Trove has two users, uh, two typical users. Um, Trove's one of the users of Trove is the operator. The operator yep. may be a cloud service provider, may be an IT person. The other user is the person who is provisioning the database. So we're talking mm -hmm. about, with the ease of use, we're talking about both of them. 
We're talking about okay. ease of use from the operator perspective. For example, an operator may want the ability to say, if you wish to provision a MySQL database and you're in a development team, you can only do that on instances of this size and you can only use traditional storage. But if you're provisioning a database for production use, you can use larger instances and you can use solid state trust. So that's okay. a that's a level of control which an operator needs, and we're trying to make that possible for them. And that's actually one of the projects which we are, in fact, working on. Um, the flavor support is already in. The volume type support is something which we're hoping to get in for new. Okay, great. And and if if I can, I know you're probably heads down just getting getting Newton underway. But what do you if you look out towards Okada, what kinds of things do you think um, you'll be looking at in that time frame? So several of the projects which I described to you are not going to be completely delivered in Newton. Uh, there's going to be superconductor as a project may take multiple releases to. Okay. Uh, get out to to users. The project to deal with upgrades, image upgrades or image-based upgrades is going to be a multi-release process. Uh, we have people already using Trove in production, and therefore, in order to get them to the point where they're able to fully use this capability, we'll probably take a couple of releases. So some of these projects are going to be multi-release uh, projects. I think the container effort is certainly going to be a multi-release effort. Um, some of these are fairly large uh, bites, which we've already taken. Uh, when we started working on replication in Juno and clustering in uh, in Kilo, we realized that it was going to take multiple releases before we could support all databases with replication and clustering. So those are some of the major projects which are already things which are ongoing, which are going to go into Okada as well. Okay. Um, I think that was all the prepared questions I had. Is there anything else that you think it's important that users understand about uh, the Trove project and, and where you're trying to drive it and um, you know, any other feedback for, for users at this point? Sure. I think uh, one of the things which I've, I've been really heartened to see with, with Trove is from the Ice House days to now, um, you know, a little over two years, Trove has, has evolved very rapidly and, and been able to deliver a significant basket of capabilities for users. So if, if somebody watching this video is a user of OpenStack and they have some database in their infrastructure, they should definitely check Trove out. It is relatively easy to get it up and running, uh, and you can very easily find that Trove is a very, very powerful addition to your existing OpenStack cloud. Um, another thing which I will add is that Trove is a rapidly evolving project, and we're always looking for new contributors to the project. So no matter what area you want to assist with, we can absolutely use your help. So please stop by either the IRC channel, OpenStack-Trove, uh, check out a copy of the source tree, uh, look at Launchpad. There's a lot of bugs which are marked as low-hanging fruit. Um, if you wish to contribute with documentation, we could use that as well. So Literally, anybody who wants to contribute to Trove, uh, there's something you can contribute. You can either use a product or you can contribute to it for other people. So uh, come on over and join the party. Great. Uh, Amr, thanks for your time and, and your insight.